This is the Hour Town okay. with Troy By, and we're just going to start this thing. Let's just start. And Tori, at Tori on the radio, <laughs> that's what I call you. Call me whatever. She is, I've been called way worse. She is back. This is so cool to have you. It's so fun to come back several times, and every time I'm back, there's a new setup. It looks fantastic in here. Well, it's... um. It's amazing how much has changed since. Mm-hmm. So episode six is when I interviewed you originally. Yes. And then you came back for episode eleven. Yes. Admittedly, at that time, uh, I was having to do a lot of the reaching out to find guests. Right. Cold calling. Mm-hmm. I think I cold called you. I cold called Matt Croshel, who has since moved from. Yeah. Way thirty one. He's out in Colorado, mm-hmm. his home state. But uh, now I'm in a different. Um, area where people are reaching out to me i'll get like yeah. one or two inquiries a day which is which good. is cool yeah it's awesome it's really cool that people want to come on your podcast and it just how what episode are we on now this will be 84 84 uh, i think Ooh, no it might be 80 it's gonna be 83 and when did you start this um when was episode a- one april 4th of 2022 i mean in less than two years, that's awesome. Yeah, uh, we'll hit, I'll hit 100 at some point this mm-hmm. fall. Um, so I have been listening to myself audio-wise <laughs> for a very long time. Yeah. And when I go back to like early years or even like last year, and I'm just like, oh my gosh, cringe. Oh, yeah. What is it in... 80 plus episodes do you go back and listen and is there a moment where you're like oh boy thank so, goodness we're like seasoned i i will say just only because i had done enough of this before mm-hmm. i i've never felt bad about the content yeah i don't feel embarrassed at all in fact i'll go back and like your episode mm-hmm. tony mack even the first episode yeah th- i think they're good good episodes, i think they're really sure. good for sure so I've never cringed at the content. Right. There's been a couple blips um, mm-hmm. in audio where I just wasn't I wasn't uh, paying attention enough, and I, and the quality didn't come out the way I would like it. Yeah. And I know better. Yeah. Where you're just kicking yourself. I have plenty of those moments still where I'm like, I knew better the than this mistake. Lighting wise, and this is a rehash for anybody. This is episode 24 is where we introduce this key light that sits above yeah. us. Yeah. So ever since 24, I felt better about the lighting Mm -hmm. and then you know obviously there's some aesthetics to it the paint and all that and then somewhere around like it wasn't until like in the 30s or 40s or the 50s that we um that i kind of uniform what it looks like Mm -hmm. now and now i don't really tweak as much because i feel like okay i'm kind of in a a good spot now as somebody who's been here this was my third time i've seen the growth early middle and now here we are and i think it's awesome every time i see an episode i'm like oh my god troy you got new desks yeah like and i'm wearing i'm wearing (laughs) erica's shirt i love it we have to you probably did a spot with her today right on the radio i did i talked to her earlier today what did you guys talk about so we talked about the montesano arts festival we talked about the concert series in madison Mm -hmm. um and then we talked about we always end up talking about restaurants we love and uh she threw out domain south i threw out sam and greg's melt and then big spoon creamery in downtown have you been there yet uh no it's out of birmingham it opened up earlier this summer Mm -hmm. and it's an ice cream place it's all homemade ice cream and they have very unique flavors they have your classic flavors but they have like a basil and goat cheese and it's just very it's so good and i am so glad that they came to huntsville so she and i talked about that but she and i have been doing that segment for over two years now and it's one of my favorite things and it's the thing i hear about the most that episode or, of or just her. Of gotcha. I hear you and Erica from All Things Madison. That's what I hear the most echoed back to me that people hear, which yeah. is pretty cool. She was a fantastic guest. She uh, is a very good communicator. Well, and a she, very creative. The way she uses words, written and just spoken, um, amazing. She uh, actually, before you came over, I thought about this clip I did that I put out. Like, I'll think about clips I've done. For like the local audience yeah. that I've run like on Instagram. Mm-hmm. And one of them was where she's talking about how she won't do business with friends and family. I was so surprised right? to see that. And so, but it's so classic and it's stuck in my head where she's like, it's just the Despains, just the Despains. Yes. Like some uh-huh. of her, some of her things are just so memorable. Like the yes. way she enunciates, you know, and, mm-hmm. and she, she's got a good sense of humor. She does. She's fantastic. But yeah, I do. I, you have the new shirt. 
I do. I have the the original one. And I almost, I had to go meet a client today. So mm-hmm. I had to kind of be a little bit more presentable. But I was going to wear my Our Town podcast t-shirt. Oh, I got another one for you too. Do you? Oh. But it's very funny because I have the All Things Madison and my fiance has that too. So every once in a while we like walk out on the same. We're like, oh, geez, we didn't <laughs> plan this. But it's a very good shirt. Well, um, yeah, I thought about like, I couldn't remember. I'm assuming you got that one if you look to your left. Yeah, I have the blue. There's mm-hmm. some new ones I have. And actually, what's well, in this logo? I like, like that. I like hat. the hat too. My little thing. You keeps... always have the best shirts. I love your guests, but I always watch for like, you always have really good shirts, and your shirts are very well planned. And yeah, I am yeah. someone who pays attention to those details, so I don't know if your guests realize like the the purposefulness, the yeah. intention of the shirts. They're always very good. Yeah, um, I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. I have been a little lazy lately because I got my new stuff, and I have three yeah. different colors in the shirts, and I've just been wearing them. Yeah. And then my kids, it's fun because like my kids are supportive, but they really love the merch. Yeah. And um, one of my friends, my kids just went to college and uh, one of his roommates was like, hey, that's a sweet shirt. He's like, well, I do have an extra one if you'd like it. <laughs> and so then he took a picture of the yeah. guy like, wearing the shirt. It's, that always happens. My parents are in Pittsburgh mm-hmm. and I sent them all trash panda stuff for Christmas. Yeah. And so that my mom will be out walking or they have Alabama sweatshirts and someone will be in Walmart roll tide or trash pandas. <laughs> I know about the trash pandas. It's always funny when it kind of goes outside of our little bubble and people are familiar with it. Yeah. This guy, John Boy, John Boy Media. Okay. He's a he's, um, YouTuber. Mm hmm. That is actually really, really good when it comes to like breaking down baseball things mm. that happen in baseball. Yeah, it, it's always funny when there's like a bench clearing brawl or a fight. Yeah, and one of his things is he learns. Um, he's a lip. He tries to lip read, I love and so he he do that. he mimics back like what the manager's saying, like mm-hmm. "f you," yeah, you know, like to the umpire, like "that's horseshit." You, yeah, that's, he's not out, you know, or whatever. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of what makes it funny. It's just a lip reading, and then sometimes he'll even like zoom into the audience to get the fans reactions to something or, mm-hmm. you know, hot dog ketchup yeah. spills on their shirt. But John boy wore at Fenway on top of the green monster. He was watching a game with a trash pandas hat on. That's awesome. And I love to see I, it. I asked actually, I think I actually asked Ricky about it. Mm-hmm. And I think that back in episode 20, he was like, well, we probably sent it to him. You know, they do spend a lot of their time trying to send out, mm-hmm. send out the merch. Yeah. Yeah. So, Very cool. man, um, so I, this is a new screen. So basically, it's very cool. What's I've never happening? Known the best place. To look you don't at. realize this, but I'm running three capture cards. It's so, amazing. It's so beyond what I can even. It's fun. Yeah. Um, so the the me, I'm on my own capture mm-hmm. card there. You're on your own thing there. Yeah. And then the the uh, the ZYP is on a switcher. It's awesome. And then we can go back to this view. Which is me and you and us. So here's Love the it. here's the us thing. So that's changed a little bit since the first time you were in. Yeah. I think oh, we strange. should uh, do a, just a few updates. Yeah. And one is the bling that's on your finger. I'm Hold engaged. on, let's go. There you go. <laughs> Look at that. Make sure it's straight. I'm engaged. <laughs> I engaged to Evan. To Evan. Evan on the radio. He's not a radio no, guy. But. No, no. He always wants. He's like, "Do you want me to do your show for you today?" I'm like, "Yeah." What would you say? And he's like, "Hey, you got Evan." I'm like, and then what? He's like, that's all I got. I'm like, perfect, perfect. Hey, there's there your, we are. there's your picture. <laughs> that's why yeah. I wanted to do this. So if you look to your right on the top, you can see the same thing you're seeing there. Yeah. But that's e- if that's easier to see on the top. Yeah, on top. Yeah. There's your picture. That was the night we got engaged, and it's actually so funny. We we're talking about Big Spoon. So he proposed to me in downtown Huntsville. He took me on our first date again, which was super nice, and. He proposed on this bench that we first sat on the first night we met. At the Big Spring Park? um, It was in the square. Okay. um, Right across from... You know, this, the winding stairs you go down to get to Domain South? Yeah. It's, the be- it's one of the benches across, like right by the courthouse. And so we sat there our first date and we just chatted. And then every time we're there, we'll get purple cups. Or every time we walk by, we're like, mm. there's our bench. There's our bench. Like, it's our bench. Um, and so he proposed to me there. And we were the plan was to go to Big Spoon and get ice cream after. And I was so emotional. The walk from the square down to Big Spoon by Mel, I just kept stopping every 10 seconds. And I was <laughs> crying. And he's like, please stop crying. People are going to think you're sad and then i get into big spoon and the sweet little high schooler who's working there's like what can i get you and i was like 
I don't know. I just got engaged. I honestly can't think. And he like proceeds to go down the me- every item on the menu and tell me about the flavor. And I'm like, what part of I just got engaged? Do you not understand? He like, understand. I cannot process what's happening here. So it's always funny to go back into Big Spoon and they're like, oh, this crazy lady's back. What did you ultimately order? Do you I remember? I remember. And I only ate a couple bites of it because I was just so overwhelmed. <laughs> with like the fact that I was engaged. So was it when you think about how it all went down, mm-hmm. were there any other locations or scenarios that you were hoping he would consider? No. It was it was the most perfect. I never anytime anyone asked me about it or we talked about it, I said I don't need it to be this big thing. I just want it to be thoughtful mm-hmm. for something, you know, that I said I don't want to come home from work and have you like, I just want to be thoughtful. Like we're going out or just a thoughtful thing that makes sense to us. And this was so perfect and made so much sense to us in like the places we go and the things we do. It mm-hmm. was so perfect. And, um, there was, it was so funny. A family right across the street had seen it and they were like cheering and they ran over and took our picture and it was so nice. And then this picture is like when we got home, and like I had calmed myself down a little bit and I was able to like process what just happened. I was like, did I say yes? And he was like, I think so. Do it again. <laughs> yes. Did, so did he, was there anybody that's close to you that he sought some advice from to, to, to understand like, look, Tori just wants it to be thoughtful. No, and simple. but he's, he's very, it's funny. He's a very like, I'm going to just take this and just do this myself. Yeah. I think that's just some people like to, you know, soundboard off people. And he's like, I'm just going to, I need to like be with my thoughts and do this. So no, nobody knew it was happening and um, nobody knew what was happening. But I, he and I had talked about it enough yeah. that I think he knew it didn't need to be this big thing. Yeah, I would have been fine if it was at home. You know, just before we went to dinner or something like that. But it, he was, it was so good. It was fun to, to text you. And, and you know, I appreciate, <laughs> um, I was thinking about this today too. I appreciate your friendship. Yeah. You know, it's, um, sometimes you're just not sure when you meet people, and particularly like somebody like in your case where you're mm-hmm. kind of a public figure. And mm-hmm. do they really like me because I'm Tory? Yeah. Or, or is it just because I'm ZYP and, yeah. you know, that means something to them? Right. You know, they they want something from you. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, it's interesting when you consider all the people you know and you interact with, but yeah. then there's just very few that you kind of are friendly with. Right. And you can be friends. Mm-hmm. And so for months, right, we, we don't text all the time, no, but, but every now and then, like, mm-hmm. hey, so uh, what's going what's on going with the on? engagement? Are you, you know, engaged like, yet? And you're like, no, it might be soon. This yeah. might have started like in January. It was know, a like, very stressful year for me. To like, just I knew it was happening. We knew, we were all on the same page. It was just like when it was happening, and just women, just we have this thing where like every day I'm like, oh my gosh, yeah, are we really going out to dinner? Are we <laughs> really going? You know, yeah. and I'm like, yeah, am I really going to a work event or am I getting it? You know, it was just torture, but yeah. like in a way that I put that on myself, and it ended up being perfect. I did know it was happening that day. I knew the day before. Oh, really? Yes. How so? So in the, it was Friday morning. He's like, do you want to go out tomorrow night? I said, sure, that would be great. And he's like, okay, great. And I said, where should we go? And he's like, somewhere downtown. And I was like, oh, you kind of already thought about this. And then he said to me, do you want to go axe throwing? And we went axe throwing on our first date, and we've never been axe throwing since. Oh. And I was like, yes. I was like, this is it. <laughs> and then I was just like, played it cool. I was like, yeah, that would be great. And I, like, at work that day, I don't think I, like, was there. I was there. I did my job. I was not processing anything that day. And then I had my girlfriends over that night for book club. And I'm sitting there, and I'm just like, I can't say anything to them. But, like, I'm looking at them, like, read my mind. I think it's tomorrow. Read my mind. Oh, okay. So. The night before. The night before. Yeah. And I'm like, I think it's tomorrow. I think it's tomorrow. I'm (laughs) fairly confident it's tomorrow. So I went and got a manicure that next morning just to be shared, like, you know, just yeah. to put set myself up for success. So 
was the manicurist asking you like so? Oh well, they had seen me a... every two weeks for months because because you were hoping because I was like, you're not going to catch me with not a manicure. Like that's the only thing I can control. Oh yeah, look at that. I can see your nails now in the picture. Oh, those are fresh yeah, that day. Fr- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Were they the same? Did you ch- alter the color or were you being? I went between like three different colors. Yeah. Of like, okay, what color do you want to like? You can't do anything crazy because you yeah. don't want that to. Um, but it was so fun, and we actually didn't tell anybody till the night. We didn't call anybody till Sunday. We just came home. And we ran around the house screaming yeah. and like celebrated and just sat together in it, because once we tell everybody, it's like, when are you doing it? What have you planned? Oh, I know. So funny how f- quick people ask you that. Sunday morning, I'm on the phone. Well, what have you gotten done so far? <laughs> I called you and let you know what happened. Like I've not done a thing yet. It just happened. It would have been funny if you had like gotten bangled striped like nails just like this is never gonna happen yeah. and then it happened that night i'm just too tightly and bound that to picture like would be like are you a Bengals fan or something like that yeah <laughs> no i thought that was a nice like neutral color like a nice neutral but he got me a beautiful ring and yeah you know he's my favorite person in the whole world so like we just have like i can't wait to marry him that's awesome we're gonna have so much fun so how long has it been since you got engaged again how July 1st. Okay, so what are the plans? Oh, I'm so glad you asked, because now, months later, I've got a ton of plans. Day after, no plans. Yeah. Um, I've got a date. I've got a venue. Um, I've got a dress. I've got a band. I've got a playlist that I'm working on with a fine-tooth comb. Mm-hmm. Um, just got welcome party stuff set up. Like It's just going to be a really fun weekend and like the big stuff is done we're doing engagement photos next month like big stuff taken care of which is cool well congratulations thank you congratulations to your son was it a fun wedding yeah yeah it was good yeah we were up in virginia for Mm -hmm. it it was crazy though because soon as that that was like on a friday and then my other son had nationals for archery in louisville so i remember you guys telling me like go to the the wedding of this we drive up to dc we for the wedding then we drive to louisville and then we drive home so that then my other son can graduate high school so it was All like of it at once yeah three boys like doing three very different things within not even yeah. within a week it was crazy but it was fun i love that kind of <clears> stuff <throat> in the moment you're like this is just wild how are we doing all of this did you feel when it was all said i always i think and people have told me that the day after your wedding feels like the day after christmas where it's kind of like Okay, what do we do now? You know, the day after yeah. Christmas, it's like kind the, of a the, bummer because it's like you, you've you been working, prepping, excited, doing all yeah. the celebrations. And then December 26th is like the most glum day. Yeah, I mean, related to that, I think these retailers are out of their mind to mm-hmm. like, it's, it's July and they got their Halloween stuff out. Yeah. Like, what a letdown it's going to be. Well, let's say it, it rains on Halloween. Yeah. You know, this big busto or something and you all of this this pent up, you know, excitement. Yeah. And then it's just, it's one day. So yeah, I think, I think what you are, the letdown I think is, it's so fun to, it is stressful Mm -hmm. to plan for a wedding. Yeah. But you're doing all these things, all these things, all these things, and then it's over. Yeah. And then, and then now life starts. Right. Like I was just at the hospital and anytime when you do have a baby, Mm -hmm. I will forewarn you, I've had four of them. Mm -hmm. The baby will be an absolute angel in the hospital. Right. An angel. Because, you know, the nurses are taking care of it. Mm-hmm. And you're taking care of it. And we were sitting there, my wife and I, and a, a, they were now, there was a couple going home. Okay. And that baby was about to pass out because it was crying so hard being put into like the right. little thing. I was like, I remember that. And that was like, and then I looked at the guy and I'm like, I hope you're a good guy yeah. because everything has been a, f- a fake fantasy mm-hmm. here in the hospital the yeah. last couple of days. Now it's on. It's about to get real. Real life is here. And that that baby is that's gonna happen a lot. Is there this false sense of like, oh my god, we got the most perfect baby? This yeah. is oh, easy. Yeah. And this, having a baby is easy. We yeah. got it. We had a, I think three of the four at least. I don't even know if they really cried in the hospital. Yeah. And then literally, as soon as we get in the car, wah, it's, it's just like chaos. Oh yeah. And then you get home, <laughs> and then you're like, and then they slept. You know, of course, you can put them in the nursery. Yeah. And you get a good night's sleep, or you might have them with you. And they sleep a lot, mm-hmm. but you will be woken up, and it is yeah. it is like a uh, what, what's a shock going on? to your it's system. I imagine, yeah. You and Evan are going to do a lot of negotiating. Like, hey, listen, <laughs> um, <laughs> if you get up, let's just say you do some <laughs> bottle feeding, right? If yeah. you get up and and feed the baby, 
I will do dishes for three yeah. days, you know? Yeah. I will paint the fence. I I will do anything, anything so that I can go back to bed. Yeah. He and I do that now with like little stuff. I hate cleaning. Do you, really? you know a grill basket you put on the grill? Yeah. I absolutely hate cleaning that. Uh-huh. I'm like, I will clean this entire kitchen if you clean this grill basket for me. <laughs> and it's like we just negotiate yeah. a lot of things, but all just very easy. You know, we're in this yeah. like bubble of everything is peaceful at the moment. That's awesome. Um, gosh, what? Oh, the other thing I wanted to update people. I want to remind <laughs> people of something. Remind uh, people, look, update. I'm reminded when you go to Valentina's that this is our pizza. That is your pizza. This is the award winning pizza. Mm-hmm. The Our Town. I love it. And I don't know if he, I think he's a little, um, he's dying to get into his new store. I drove by it. It's beautiful. Last week. Stunning. Yeah, it's beautiful. I can't wait. And it's going to be, I think he said his current restaurant, it's four times bigger. Mm-hmm. Like, you only can sit it like 40 people. Quite, yeah. And now he can fit 160, mm-hmm. you know, inside or whatever. But uh, when he came back from Vegas, and, uh, and I was all over that. Yeah. So that's actually like my logo, at least the uh, it, my original logo. Yeah. And put a pizza in there. Looks like, what great. do you think about this? Mm-hmm. Um, I just, he, I had him on my show shortly after. Yeah. And he was telling me, and I just nosy about the new space. Like, as a person who can't wait to sit there and eat the pizza, yeah. he was telling me about all the different types of pizza he's going to have. And I was like, this is going to be amazing. <laughs> it's going to be so good. And it's I'm so happy for him. Like, you know, you meet people. I've met a lot of people. You've met a lot of people. Yeah. And, like, there's just people I root for. Root for you. Root for Erica. I root for Joe and for Valentina. It's like, there's just people you meet and you're like, I'm just rooting for you. I just started um, working with this woman um, with Heavenly Companion Aquamation. It's a uh, pet cremation, but it's water-based as opposed to fire. And I went and met with her a couple weeks ago. And it's like just somebody I'm rooting for to have to success. You just meet those people where you're like, man, I am just so rooting for you. And he's one of those people. It's pet cremation? Yeah. Okay, so when they do pass? Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. They'll come to your home, drink. pick it up, take it back to their... They have this beautiful facility. Wow. They do all of the cremation, and then they bring it back to your house. It's just like this... So you I can said have that her, memory. I said to her, I said, why? How did you come up with this? She's like, well, I was a hospice nurse. And I was like, oh, oh my gosh, you're just doing like this incredibly hard work, and now you're doing this extension of it with people's pets. Yeah. Which... Losing a pet is a devastating thing. She just like, I told her, so I meet a lot of business owners who have great passion for their businesses. I've never met anybody with the passion that you have for this in a very like heavy thing. It's a heavy thing to have to take people's pets day in and day out and like care for the people who just lost their pets as well. But anyways, she, um, Erica, you, Joe, the people over at Tom Brown's, like they're just people I root for mm. all the time. I appreciate it. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. I just saw a picture um, somebody posted. I guess I won't mention the company name. And it was bring your, you know, it's kind of like bring your child to work or, mm. or, or managing your time between work and pleasure. And it wasn't a baby in like a carrier. It was like a puppy. <laughs> and they're working. Yeah. And so it's like more and more there's things like first it was like insurance mm-hmm. for, for pets. And yeah. now there's like day, there's like daycare. So everything that we're doing like as humans, you're doing more and more you're doing pets. for your pets where yeah. now it's like uh, they're bringing their pet to work. It's one mm-hmm. thing to bring your child to work and have a daycare. Now you might bring your pet to work. Mm-hmm. And and I saw it at Amazon. I used to work yeah. a lot with the people at Amazon and you go into their office and everybody has their dog. You're about to see it at WZIP really? <laughs> because I just got a dog yeah. and I said, my boss had been asking me, when are you getting a dog? When are you getting a dog? And I said, whatever my boss tells me, I can bring it to work every day. There's your dog. And I looked at him like, he's like, I don't care. There oh she is. God. There's my girl. Maggie. <laughs> There's my German Shepherd, Maggie. And I just got her <laughs> pet insurance approved and right? she's going to a trainer next month. And it's. So why would my, my whole point is, why wouldn't there be something like cremation services? Because. Right. To some people, if they're not able to have kids or they don't want to have kids, their pets are their children. 
And when you think about uh, you think about her, she's 66 pounds already at the end of her life, fully grown, <laughs> looking at 88 pounds. So when she passes, what am I supposed to do? Yeah. Physically, what am I supposed to do? And it is when they, when I met her and I'm like, this is the answer to like the prayers you didn't even know you had yeah. about what right. do you do when this happens? And somebody that takes care of these animals the way this woman does is like you would trust your 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 kids with them, your your pets alive or passed on. Like just nobody. The passion I saw from this woman was just remarkable. Where is she out of? She's in Coleman. Okay. Mm -hmm. But she goes, I, she was asking, she's like, well, I've gone to Auburn. I've gone to, you know, Nashville to get pets. Like just people call her. And she just is one of those people that's like, yeah, I'll come get your pet. She'll come to your house. Like she goes all over North Alabama. She'll come and pick them up from your vet office, from your home. And then she, she gives you some sort of She gives nice you urn. a engraved cedar urn. Yeah. A nose print, a paw print. She'll do fur or whiskers in epoxy. And then she'll do like an imprint of the paw. And that is all included with the cremation process. And she just learned to do it herself. She's like, I just wanted to be able to give them this. So I learned how to engrave. Like just somebody who just leaned in. Yeah. Physically built the building that it happened. Like physically her and her husband and her father-in-law just built like this really great um shed building barn situation yeah. just you meet people and you're like that's cool i'm so glad i met you and you know one of those out of uh coleman as well i interviewed um a former fbi guy mm -hmm. in the last i don't know episode 74 tc fuller doesn't mm -hmm. live here but he uh his wife still works for the fbi mm -hmm. and he um uh does a lot of analysis on like these unfortunately these shootings at schools so the one in nashville yeah but there's this company kt technologies okay down in coleman and they have come up with a um they look like whiteboards if you were to go into the classroom i've seen this and then they pull yes you pull on them and it turns into a a armor protected you know room, ballistic protected right? room it's yeah room. i saw it on tiktok yeah and i realized it was common and i was like that's amazing yep. that this is coming out of common so, uh, very cool. You know what? This, That's my this, I don't think Maggie really understands how big she is, right? She doesn't. And it's, it's so funny because she's only 10 months, so she's yeah. not fully grown yet. And she has not yet grown into her limbs. Like, the way she sits and her tail is so long, it's just like her ears are... like She's not grown into herself <laughs> yet. So she's just very sweet. You know what she reminds me of? It reminds me a little bit of like Will Ferrell and Elf. When he just doesn't, he's just he's like, hey, guys. Un unaware Yeah, he's of just self. like, yeah. I just want to have fun, and I'm sitting here, yeah. and it, it just, that's just what that picture reminds She's me of. She's clumsy. <laughs> she has run into multiple fences chasing tennis balls. Um, just, like, hits her head on doors. She's so focused on us that she's unfocused on things around her. We hear throughout the day, because really? she'll just hit her head on cabinet stored I'm like oh my god are you okay she's not struggling with her vision or anything that she... my mom said can she see because like <laughs> she went full on into a fence at the dog park and everybody at the dog park was laughing at us and we're like yeah she's ours so how's the um there's like some obedience training and yeah like, how's that going um, it's not going, you know, <laughs> you know, just we're very aware of what we don't know. And it's we know going. we don't know that we are not qualified to train a German Shepherd. So basically she can sit, she's potty trained, she's great, like at a bare minimum of being a dog, but she is a little skittish. Um, she's not socialized. And so we have kind of a lot to do. And the more we have her, the more we keep calling her unpolished. Like she's very <laughs> unpolished. And we're looking at each other like we don't know how to train working dogs. You know, you can kind of get away with yeah. not training certain breeds of dogs. You know, An yeah. untrained golden retriever is just going to lick you to death, you yeah. know. But a working <laughs> dog like this, you know, we're very mindful of what that the consequences of not training a working dog so we are getting her trained in a very intense intensive way next month so gotcha. we're very excited about that it's also going to be what's best for her yeah. you know i always was like i really want a dog but i'll never do it 
until I can do is it she, the right way. Is she good at the dog park? She loves the dog park. So she's it's, not a, any sort of threat or no or too big. Is is could she be too um, excited and like just run over a little dog, or does she understand? No, it's she's so nervous about the world mm-hmm. that I think she's unsure of it, and I think that could eventually be a problem. It's not a problem, yeah, but I think it could be a problem that like she's so fearful okay. that that's, um, but not at home with us. She's you know has she she's never had another owner. She, came, she has. She did. We have. took her from a great family okay, that good family. just had other dogs and kids, and they just were having another baby, and just it was, it wasn't fair yeah. for her. They need so much activity, so much energy output that they just couldn't. So yeah. we love them, and we're so grateful they trusted her with us, us with her. Um, but she's technically untrained. Yeah, you know, she was trained for their family. Yeah. We socialize, we go places, we travel. I want to bring her to work. I want her, I want people to come up and pet her, you know? Like, so we are, we're exhausted. We're at Home Depot, we're at Lowe's, we're at the dog park. We are taking walks. We are doing enrichment. Like, we are solely focused yeah. on this dog. And at the end of the night, we like hit our pillows and it's like yeah. 10 seconds and we're done. It's so fun to watch your Instagram posts. <laughs> and I'm always like, oh, here She's we go. Something. What's yeah. going to happen to this time? She's so funny and. Um, it's just, it's, she's tall enough that her ears like stick up. You can always kind of track the ears cause they kind of <laughs> stick up over counters and tables and chairs. Yeah. So it's always funny cause we're like, well, just look for the ears. You'll find her. And it's, it's and it so also silly. reminds me if you've ever seen uh, Pixar does a great job with their short movies before their movies mm-hmm. and the for the birds where there's the big gangly bird <laughs> that like sits on the wire mm-hmm. and it's just like, Hey guys. You right. know, like, um, and they're all like, ah, da, 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 da. you know, yeah. they don't like the bird, but it's just, I just get this like, hi, I'm here. I'm yeah. happy. And I'm a bird too. She's silly and she's clumsy I, and it's I'm like, bigger than you, but yeah, she doesn't even realize. And she just wants to get right where you are yeah. regardless of whether there's space. Well, since you've been here her. last, we've fostered, we've been fostering cats. Okay. I think, I can't remember if we had started doing that or not. My, my wife used to do it in Virginia, uh-huh. and we resumed doing it, yes. and she works uh, at Caddyshack. Okay. In fact, um, I th- yeah, a few episodes after the, the, when we, uh, we I had her in, this lady, Tina Cooley from mm-hmm. Caddyshack. But um, it's weird with cats, and like you'll have, we had these two cats that were born like in a car engine, or they were found, oh they, 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 I think the, the mother gave birth to them in a car engine, and then a few days later, the, di- the guy drives to work. 40 miles away Ugh. and they fall out of the engine and they we end up getting them perfectly happy yeah awesome cats right yeah then you'll have a cat that's like you would think that'd be a traumatic experience mm-hmm. like just that whole yeah. first few days then you'll get cats that like they just they're so skittish <laughs> you know and and that's like yeah. well they had a they had a tough thing and like were they born in a car engine because like right because i me, saw a very yeah. emotionally adjusted well, they, cat and it's just like sometimes yeah. there's abuse and sometimes there's not mm-hmm. but then it's just like some of them have these great personalities and some of them don't yeah but uh, it's very and it's very interesting because like you can't you know i can explain to you why i'm having a bad day yeah. or why i am the way i yeah. am or what it is that's scaring me today, I could tell you. Like, there's just, that's like a very hard thing. Well, that's what's great about dogs compared to cats. At least dogs, you get a little bit more um, emotion out of them. Yeah. You get a little bit more feedback mm-hmm. on how their, you know, their tail's going to, right. they're, they're so excited. Yeah. Cats, is just like, you know. Yes, And yesterday, I, I kind of brought that up too, because yesterday, our oldest cats, they just turned 10. Cats live a long time. They do, and... um and that's like kind of what started it all, like with this cat thing mm-hmm. in, the, in our house. How many do you have at any given time? Um, right now we have six because two are fosters. Yeah. So technically they'll get adopted, mm-hmm. and then um, one of we have we've always had three. Okay. And then my daughter has her own cat, and she's living right. with us now. So yeah, but they're fine. You, yeah, you don't even cats are pretty cat. easy. They can scurry and mm-hmm. disappear if they want. Yeah, but some three of them, four of them now spend time outside. Okay, they just come and go. Yeah, you know, which is kind of nice. I, I had a cat growing up, which was an indoor cat. So the whole concept of outdoor cats is a very <laughs> like strange thing to me. But Evan's family has cats and had indoor outdoor, 
And so we'll be walking and a cat will start following us. And I get so freaked out. I'm like, no, no. And he's like, that's just what the cat does. Like, get it away from me. Like, it's just, I don't want the cat near me. It's just a, just, I never grew up with outdoor cat situation. Let's see. Um, And one more picture I want to show. And this is another shout out to to us. There's our girl. There's our friend, Erica. (laughs) And I, I didn't really get to expound. I mean, she did such a good job of like, Saying she was gonna be on the show, then she mm-hmm. came on the show, mm-hmm. and then she did a probably two or three things. You know, she does her live on yes. Thursdays, or mentioned in the newsletter, and a really good write up of just she being on the show. Like it's just a really, you know. And I told her I was like, "Well, we owe you Valentina's at a minimum <laughs> for 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 how nice you've been." Right. And um, and it was well received. I mean, she has yeah. certainly a good following. I think the little pocket that she has carved out for herself has yeah. just been so fun to watch and just recognizing a space that needed attention yeah. and the way she does it the work she puts into it it's just i'm in awe of her professionally but also just like personally like i because i talk to her on fridays and we'll text throughout the week and you know friday morning before she and i even get to the business part of it we spend 15 20 minutes catching up and just hearing all of the different aspects yeah is just i don't know when she how she does it all but she crushes it yeah Mm -hmm. so what do you want to I noticed uh, something related to the NSYNC news. I know you wanted <gasps> oh to talk about gosh. that, right? Oh my gosh. So, have you seen this lately? I only saw, so I saw they were on the VMAs. Yes. Right? And so, leading up to that, a yeah. couple weeks ago, Justin Timberlake posts a photo of okay. JC Chazé. Wishing him happy birthday. Okay. And everybody takes note because it's an it's a new photo. It is current JC, current Justin, and they're in a studio. And that's what and I mean like none of this is on accident, mm-hmm. right? Like this was all Yeah. The marketing behind all of this is fantastic. Yeah. Um but I've been doing this in radio long enough to know if we're seeing Justin Timberlake again, it's because something's happening. If we're seeing people, he's there to promote something. T- yeah, like if it's not on, it's not on accident. Yeah. So everybody starts wondering why JC and Justin are together in a studio, and then everybody very quickly just loses their mind at the fact <laughs> that could in sync be getting back together or doing something. Backstreet Boys have been back together. 98 Degrees has been doing a ton of stuff. It's like we've all just been waiting for these five guys <laughs> to agree right. that it's time to do it again. And then it just kind of manifested and got like bigger and bigger. And then it kind of went quiet. Like we we kept hearing we're going to get an announcement. We're going to see something. And it just nothing happened. And then the day before the MTV VMAs, which mm-hmm. was on Tuesday night of last week, um, all these reports start surfacing that all five of them have been seen in New York where the VMAs were happening. And it was like too much of a coincidence. Mm-hmm. And there was rumors that they have this new song for the Trolls movie. I had no intentions of watching the VMAs. And then Tuesday right. morning, I cleared my entire schedule Tuesday night. And <laughs> me and Sam from ZYP yeah. were just like so, so focused on this. And right at the beginning, NSYNC comes out, announces an award. Taylor Swift comes up. And what's the best is Taylor Swift, biggest superstar currently, yeah. right? She freaked out when she saw NSYNC. Yeah, because that's right in her it's wheelhouse, right? right in her wheelhouse, yeah. So she gets her award, and she looks at them, and she's like, well, what are you doing? You have to be doing something if you're here, which is the question we all wanted. So that was awesome that she asked. And then the next day, it was announced that they do have a new song for the Trolls movie. It'll be out Friday the 29th. It's called Better Place. As of now, no plans for a tour, no plans for shows, no Vegas residency. Um, I'm hoping that changes. And in the in the previous Trolls movie, Justin himself Justin's had a song. Justin's been in it, yeah. Okay. I think Can't Stop the Feeling was for Trolls. That's right. Yeah, and I think he's in it. I don't even know. There's like 15 Trolls movies now, it feels like. Um, now, but- wasn't there also, they did a clever clip where they used the Friends... Yes, um, right before, sh- right when they announced that the song was happening, the I don't know anything. Do you? Yeah. Well, what do you know? A secret. I know what you know. Yeah, that kind of. That thing. was well done. Very well done. All of it planned. 
the marketing we do now for this kind of stuff is just amazing. Well, and how cool to what a lift for the VMAs. Yeah, in, in a way, because I had no intention to watch, yeah. and then here I was watching it. And then how cool to get someone like Taylor Swift in on it, who is the a mega star. Yeah, arguably, you know, one of the most successful of all time. Has of all to be. time, yeah. You know, in multiple genres. billion dollars this year on that tour, and, and to see freaking her, out about In Sync, and to see her fangirl out mm-hmm. on In Sync. Yeah, puts things in perspective. Yeah, but here's what I don't like. I'm going to show you a picture. Okay, and this this bothers me. What? Ugh, they aged like a fine wine, I tell you. I hate the fact, I don't know if you can, I don't know if, you, try to enter my mind. Okay. And, 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 um, I'm trying to decide what could you hate, I don't know. There's something I really don't like in, in, in the fashion of what's the going fashion. on The fashion. They're ill-fitting suits? Well, I don't like the fact that if, in fact, pleats are coming back. Oh. So Justin's got pleated pants on. Yeah. I I hate that. Mm-hmm. And I also, it's one thing I know that mostly skinny people can get away with having a little bit of a high water. Yeah. And most dress pants now are are cut a little higher, and that's fine with the socks. I mm-hmm. have them. But the it seems like it's, we're getting too baggy. And they I, do. Like we've been going that slim fit, and yeah. now it looks like they rented these so from not, Men's Warehouse well, on their way. <laughs> no, there, actually, there's three things I hate. I don't like French, um, the uh, double-breasted suits. Okay. And who's on Please the far left? Please explain to me the double-breasted suits. I don't know anything about suits. If you look at um, who's on the far left, here, yeah, that's Joey Fatone. Okay, Joey's wearing a double-breasted suit. Okay, so is the <gasps> oh, guy. Oh, I see it. Like, yeah. Okay. And then if you look at who's next to Joey on his right, that's Lance Bass. Okay, Lance is wearing a normal. That's mm-hmm. a three-button. That's mm-hmm. three-button. Really was a hot thing in the '90s and early 2000s. Yes. Justin, I think, is just wearing a number, a normal two or three, okay. and the other guys wearing double-breasted suits. Mm-hmm. I hate. I hate double-breasted suits. You know, now that I'm looking at them, I do too. And um, and I don't like the baggy look anymore. I don't like the pleats. So, I'm, you know but I guess funny? what? Those, they're, if Justin of, Timberlake's wearing them, I guess they're coming back. Each one of those suits probably costs more than I make in gear. Uh, they so it's probably they don't look expensive. And I mean, you know, I think what it is, I think it's a good ode to their past, where they always had sort of coordinated but complimentary yeah. outfits. And I think it works for what they represent, but in an updated, we're mature, yeah. but we still want to be fashionable. Well, the reality is, and I do own a lot of suits, and it depends. You look at the suit model, mm-hmm. you're like, okay, well, that's probably not going to look that, that like that yeah. on me, but I'm still going to get it, you know? And then you get it, and that model wants to wear it however they want yeah. to do it, but I just do not want to see pleats come back. Since we're talking about suits, and Mm -hmm. you are somebody who wears suits, Mm -hmm. I am not somebody. So I am in the process of figuring out what the men in this bridal party of mine are going to be wearing. And we have settled on tuxedos. We found a beautiful tuxedo. (laughs) I didn't even realize how many different like lapels and all the different options with the tux. They've changed a lot. The big thing that I am struggling with, and I know what I want, and I know what the men want, um, is vest cummerbund or nothing and i know what i want what i think is currently what i'm seeing currently and i just i would love your opinion on no vest no cummerbund i think the cummerbund is probably a thing of the past Mm -hmm. you know i don't think i see that very often yeah vests i would say yes to a vest I don't like the vest, but you don't have to because, and I think I think modern tuxedos have changed a lot too. Mm-hmm. Where they almost just look like suits. But the thing about a vest that's a little bit better is, let's say you get to the party and you want to dance, and or whatever, and they take the jacket off. Yeah, and the the vest at least still gives you some of the the intended color. Then they're just having a white shirt on. And that's what everybody has said to me, and to me, that's what I hate about it. Really, when you take the coat off. And there's just the vest. It's and I'm like, am I? Is it me? Am I the problem here? Uh, I don't want them wearing vests. Well, it's the same as like I don't, I don't. You would have to force me to wear a cummerbund. Yeah. To me, that seems seems like so 80s, 90s, yeah. and or or like Downton Abbey. Evans you know? like, like it reminds me of high school band. And I'm like, I get. I that. think you I could be. That. I think you'd be fine with just a bow tie. That's what I think. Right? I'm leaning towards and a really nice crisp pressed yes. shirt. Yes. Really crisp. Yeah. I, that's what I want. But like all the men are like the vest. I'm like, I don't want the vest. It feels dated to me, the vest. Um, 
I don't know, maybe. Mm-hmm. I think you're going to probably see uh, a half and half just a bow tie and, and, and vest. I'm yeah. not even going to speak. Cumberbund, let's just leave it out. Yeah. I wouldn't even go there. And see, I only threw cummerbund in there because I hate the vests. Where gotcha. I'm like, can we do a cummerbund? And Evan's like, that reminds now, me I will of say high this. school band. I would say it, it may not look on certain guys. It can be like extreme. It look really good. Yeah. Then there's guys that they don't. They don't need to be wearing a vest. Right. You, and like, if you already need your suit coat to cover your tummy, mm-hmm. and I got that problem, you'd probably don't want to wear a vest. I like, think you don't it need to looks accentuate a little your, bit more formal. And my wedding happens. It's just gonna. It's turning out to be quite the formal mm-hmm. situation. I think it looks more formal, and I think I prefer them when they take their coats off. Go ahead, take it off when you're yeah. ready to have fun. I prefer them in just the like pants and shirt. Yeah, you, as long as the shirt is a quality, because it usually has like a little bit of the um, what are the, what's on the front, like the pleats. Yeah, kind of a pleated yeah. thing. If it just looks like a quality mm-hmm. shirt, a formal shirt, I think you're fine. Yeah. And just do the just do the bow tie. That's what I think I'm leaning towards. By the way, when we ran that clip, I ran that clip of you like and Evan was here. Yeah. Like, hey, so have you thought about your wedding colors? Mm-hmm. Like and, and you, the look on your face yeah. was kind of like it was just it I'm, was priceless. I'm happy to report that <laughs> over a year later, as it's time for me to actually pick wedding colors, I have no idea. And that's like my next big thing I have to choose uh, because then everything, other decisions. It's funny, all of the different decisions that need made, but you have to, like, it has to go in a certain order. Mm-hmm. And like my next thing is the colors. And I just can't, uh, there's, I hate all the colors. I don't want, it's like I don't want any of the what colors. What are you leaning towards? I am leaning towards maybe a champagne or like a sage green. But other than that, I'm not sure. Hmm. It's a very hard a thing about me is when it comes to colors, committing to a color, whether it's my iPhone color, the case on my <laughs> iPhone, the throw pillows on my couch, um, things like that. Committing to a color scheme has been like I cannot make a choice. What does your mom want? Um, I don't really think she's given me that opinion yet what hmm. it is she wants. We know what we don't want. Bless Evan's heart. He threw out yellow. Okay. <laughs> He's like, you know, Pittsburgh, the Steelers, yeah. yellow. Black and I yellow. I was like, you can play the black Steeler and yellow. Steeler yellow as my color. Black and yellow. Black and yellow. <laughs> like, okay, I, is, I get um, it what you're saying, but. <sighs> what does uh, one Samantha Imker, Sam I Am on the radio say? She would say black is your color (laughs) because black is her favorite color. And she'd say, I think the the complimentary color should be black, which I'm also considering, actually. You know what? My I love royal blue. So Evan's tux is navy. Okay. So it has to be a color that commits that complements navy. I think royal blue and navy would not. That's true. And I like royal blue, but I don't like royal blue for a wedding. Okay. Navy, huh? You got my mind spinning. I know. If you come up with any good colors, if any like good interior designer people are listening, please send me a good I color just, swatch. I just I have love, no idea. I often will go back and just watch that clip just to be like, what's your wedding colors? And just the look on your face is kind of like, am I? It's is right it, here. It's right here. It's still new. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I love it's it. It's so very funny. But he's a really good sport at some of the things. Yeah. That either come out of my mouth or we throw at him. He's really good at like kind of just running with it. Yeah. Which is good. Well, you mentioned the iPhone and I haven't really uh, done a ton of research on it. Yeah. But what's going on with the new, is it the 15? Yeah. The 15 was just announced this week and the new Apple Watch and I think new AirPods are coming. And the new 15, the biggest difference is they're changing the charging station. Yeah. I did hear that. Is that USB C now? Yeah. Sweet. Yeah, for you. So I no hate more lightning. That. Oh, I hate that. Really? Why? I don't want to get all new charging devices. Oh. I hate that they do that. I'm gonna do it. Well, but I hate that they do that to me. I guess I only say that because I also for like my computers, a MacBook or the yeah. studio, they all use USB C. Yeah. And so it's it's nice in a way sometimes because you have like your 
You can have a USB A mm -hmm. to US to Lightning, USB A yeah. to USB C, and it's like, oh my goodness. I'm very, I'm very loyal to the Apple products, but I'm a very late adopter. I just got on board with AirPods this year. Oh really? Where I was like, nope, I'm gonna lose them. I want the cable. I want it plugged into my phone. I love the AirPods, but I just, it just. I'm very late to this game. I just got rid of the home button on my phone, and I'm miserable <laughs> about it. Evan's like, you're going to love it. I don't love it. I yeah. don't. I still am like trying to hit a home button. But they make you... It's funny how you have no choice. You have no choice. You have to conform. I always do. And the cameras, though, right? Like They're good. My brother was telling me something about... And I couldn't even really... Spatial is something with like the way it can do spatial stuff. And... Oh. And I'm like, what are you saying? Like, it was so high tech yeah. in a way with these. They're like, oh, now you can do X, Y, and Z. And I'm like, well, I didn't even, I didn't even, it hadn't even crossed my mind that, right. that, was, that was a gap, right. you know, in capability. <laughs> I've never been like, you know what I'm missing in this <laughs> iPhone? <laughs> I'm, I never have found. The only thing, and they've not done this yet, the thing that I need and the only thing that would get me to be first in line for a brand new expensive iPhone is if you give me the ability to get out of a group text. Really? Yeah. Oh, you can't do it. Unless everybody is an iPhone user. You get one Android in that group text and you're stuck. Really? And the fact that we don't have an option to get yourself out of a group text you were put in is crazy. Hmm. Now, if they give me that feature, I'll pay however much they want for it. Which is expensive. I think the lower level seven ninety nine for the fifteen. Yeah, that's lowest level. Yeah, Wild. I was. Just, I actually before you showed up, I was. It was nine ninety nine. I was looking at their site. Yeah. Are it's you somebody crazy. that wants the newest model of no. stuff? Okay. No, quite. And honestly, since I pay for six phones, mm. I You're don't get flip I, phones. I don't care. <laughs> and I. Yeah. And I've always just been whatever. Mm -hmm. I always want to make sure my wife and the kids have something yeah. better than me. Yeah. And and actually, I have like I spend probably more time on my work phone. Right. Which you know is free to me. Yeah. But um, the, I no, I've never really cared. Even yeah. even when I had less kids, I I didn't, I didn't really care too much. Yeah, I've never been somebody that needed the newest of it. And I also though I'm, I kind of am old enough that uh, I just didn't really grow up with the phone mm. in my hand where I'm like this hardcore consumer that yeah. has all these specific requirements. Yeah. And I still struggle with things like my kids are like, well, how come you haven't done X, Y, and Z? Because I don't care. Yeah. And I don't care to learn. Yeah. You know. It's alarming to me, the kids in the phones. Yeah. I kind of am in that sweet spot where I grew up without it. High school was when we all started getting cell phones. Mm -hmm. They didn't do anything other than a couple texts, which you had to pay 25 cents for in and out, <laughs> you know? And you had to like hit that like S, the five, three different times to get what you were looking for. Um, and we didn't have social media on our phones. Yeah. So like the kids with the phones is terrifying to me. I just dropped my son off at like his apartment mm -hmm. and got him set up and he brought his whole gaming computer. Yeah. But he hasn't, he was like, I don't know if I'm going to, I'm going to play a lot. I don't know if I should play a lot. Like, and that was music to my ears. Like, like you shouldn't. It's going to be a huge right? distraction for you. Yeah. Right. But at the same time, he didn't have a really reliable laptop. Yeah. And he does. He is used to doing his work on his desktop computer. And then he's like three or four days into this. And he writes to me, he's like, you know, I can't believe how much time there is in a day when you don't spend it on a computer. He's like, I've been able to read my book and I've been able to study yeah. for these different classes and mm -hmm. I have so much time. I'm like, and I've only been saying that, yeah. but sure. Yeah. <laughs> Glad you came to that. I was conclusion. like, now you know why I don't spend time idly doing stuff. Yes. I'm trying to be productive with my mm -hmm. time. Yeah. Do you ever just do days where you don't do anything though? Cause you seem like a high performer uh, type of person where you're always doing stuff. I can't do you ever do a day. Of nothing? I can't sit still. Okay. No, because because there's always something I, in my mind, like I should be doing this, I should be doing mm -hmm. that, you know. Yeah. I, I um, like when I go on vacation, it t it does take me a few days to get into to like shut it down. to shut it down, and then but when I'll shut it down and I'll shut it down quite well. Mm -hmm. And then it ha and then there's a little bit of adjustment coming back to to, yeah. to reality. Like I think ten days for me, seven days is too short for a vacation. Yeah. Fourteen's too long. Too long. Ten is good for Sweet me. Sweet spot. Because it takes me about three days to like get into the mode mm -hmm. 
The best thing I did last Thanksgiving, I shut off my email on my phone. Did you really? Shut off the notifications. I told my boss, I said, hey, I'm going to be gone for vacation for the holidays. I'm shutting off my email. I told him after the fact because I didn't turn it back on. I said, hey, I shut this off. I'm not turning it back on. <laughs> Uh, so if there's something that happens in the afternoon or the evening that you need me via email and it's important, just text me. Yeah. Like, I'm not trying to not be available, but I'm trying to not be available yeah. for a lot of it. And I never turned the notifications back on. I'll still check my email on my phone, yeah. but when I choose to do it, it was the best thing I've ever done. Well, the, our town with Troy by is 24-7. Yeah. We're, I mean... <laughs> I think about it all the time because yeah. right? I'm trying to lean into this mm-hmm. and, and, uh, you know, I figure I'm going to try really, really hard mm-hmm. and I, and if it fails or it doesn't ever succeed to get to the level I want, I can't say I didn't try. Right. You're just going to grind at it I'm just gonna grind as at long it. as you think you need to. Yeah. And then when you don't, I'm told not like, having, not having fun anymore. Yeah. You were excited important. to come over today, right? I was excited to come over today and it's funny. I had it on my calendar. I was like, are we doing, are we? Because like we, you and I both are just a, yeah. a million miles per minute. And so I was like, what did we, uh, when did we book this? Because I am in a place where I have to book things quite yeah. far in advance. Yeah. So no, I am excited to come anytime. Let's do, I want to show a, a couple more pictures. Okay. And this is, I want to <gasps> hear, I don't think I know much about this. So can yeah. you like plug this? Yeah. So I do spin classes at Zoom in downtown Huntsville, right okay. by Purveyor, right oh, by yeah. Melt. There's a really lovely spin studio there, and that's the owner, Jody. So women-owned business. It's just a really great... Um, how many days a week? Yeah, it depends on how busy I am. 2020 into 2021, six days a week, oh, when wow. we still weren't doing anything, I'd go every day just to get out of the house. Now it's more three to five, depending on the week two sometimes last couple when we got this dog i've i'm just getting back to it now um but it's like you, they do 45 minute classes 30 minute classes throughout the day different instructors different themed rides and hmm. when i moved here i've been here four years now which is surprising sure. three Longest. years to the day at any other place i'd lived um so four years came and went and when i moved here there were things that i had set out of I wanted, I was burnt out from morning, so I wanted a different schedule. There was just a lot of things, like personally and professionally, that mm-hmm. I kind of set for myself over the course of a couple years. And one of the things was I needed to get into a good exercise routine. I've always exercised, never consistently. Never found the thing that just like mm. I could commit to all the time. I'd yeah. go through ebbs and flows. And I just really, it was like on my like punch list of like this new part of my life. You have to find something. You have to stick to it. And that was my thing. And they have this thing where they have these milestones, 100, 250, 500, 750, 1,000. And so those are sort of your milestones you're going for. I'm a pretty self-competitive person. So I'm like, oh, you want 100 rides? I'll get you 100 rides. (laughs) And like they do all these challenges throughout the year. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'll be there. Gotcha. And so I just have stuck to it, you know, since 2020, That's right awesome. before the pandemic. And I just, this summer hit 500 rides. So it almost looks like 5,001. Just oh, the way it that does. The you know, that's what it was. Point. It was 5,000 rounds. <laughs> <Yeah, sorry. laughs> Let's that's go right. with that. Uh, yeah, but it, and Jody is the owner, and I took my first class with her. Yeah. And so my 100th and my 250 and my five, I always like to take her classes as my milestone classes, kind of just mm-hmm. like a. And do you me. always wear your pirate's hat? I either wear a pirate's hat or a Penn State hat. Okay. Yeah. Oh I'm man. Covered in sweat. You know those hats that you like work out in that have like well, the like <laughs> the like sweat, sweat stains. stains? Yeah. That's that hat. Yeah. Oh, when mm. I played baseball, like oh my gosh, you wouldn't believe like how. And I was just a dirty person. I never mm. like had my mom clean my yeah. stuff, and I would just look or if, like golf. You know, I played a lot of yeah. golf in the summer. And, like you don't think to do that. Some hats are just nasty. Yeah. Well, the problem with a hat is like you can't. You have to be really careful how you wash it, and like yeah. if you wash it in a washing machine, it can ruin it. If mm-hmm. you put it in the dishwasher, that's can you know you can ruin it. like. Yeah. It, but and that's what sucks is it's it's only going to be like fresh in the sense of the way mm-hmm. it's supposed to fit you or yeah. the way you like it, and then. There's that can be compromised, right? And then it's it's, it's just the way it goes. Like sometimes or you get it to fit perfectly, yeah. 
and then and that's it. One wash. It's and it's frustrating because yeah. they're even these. I have four of these types of hats. Mm-hmm. They're all Richardson one twelves. Yeah, but there's um, two of them fit. Like I take them out of the box, and there's like a setting of like mm-hmm. you know like three things are exposed, and they fit fine. Yeah. But the other two, I have to turn it. I have to widen it to the fourth. Like mm. I have to adjust the settings. Yeah, sounds it's like the same hat. Clothing. It's sounds the same like hat. women's clothing. So, the, and then you can tell. You can sometimes. I'll, I'll actually of the four. There's the light blue one fits the best. Yeah, fits the best. It's the same damn hat. Do you ever have days where you're like, nope, I can't deal with this hat today. I emotionally oh. need this hat no. today. <laughs> Well, like you said, I try, I'll try. I know this, this color scheme may not really go, I like but it. of all the hats, this is probably the closest to matching. Like yeah. I figured the back color and I don't know. Yeah. It's close I enough. like that hat. I need to get one like that for WZYP. Oh. I need a hat for ZYP um, and I need to have the logo on it. Safari Sun. That's who I use. Yeah. It's like kind of been on my list of things to do, but the list is long. So what else do you want to talk about? Oh my gosh. So... I actually have to tell you, I was at Bucky's yesterday. Oh, really? And it's like, I won't go for weeks. And then I go. And it's like my last, my last shopping trip ever. <laughs> and so I got new stuff yesterday. And I know you're also a Bucky's oh, enthusiast. I'm a huge Bucky's. So fan. I always like to tell people, like, hey, do you want to hear what I tried at Bucky's? That's new. I got the beaver nuggets, obviously. Oh, like, yeah. Classic. I didn't know there were other types of beaver nuggets. Until yesterday. You just get in the same flavor? I just get the OG. The OG. The, the tried and true purist. Um, I have a thing about sour candy. I'm always on the hunt for really sour candy. Really? I just, none of it is sour enough for me. None of it's sour to me at all. I don't mm-hmm. know if that's a COVID thing where like it ruined my taste um, buds. sour taste buds. But they have the rainbow ribbon strips. It's like the gum. It's the sour gummy. Oh. It is so sour. I and have, I like actually make faces when I eat it. I'm like, this is awesome. I think I have some of those in our pantry. Oh, you can, are they from Bucky's? Yes. Oh, you they're can, so good. You can leave with them. Those are the two things I always get. But yesterday, and I just went crazy. I got the cake pops. Have, did you know they have cake pops? I did not know that. It was a set of three. And then I got beef jerky which i eat beef jerky like once every five years but <laughs> they have a beautiful wall of beef jerky yeah and i was just calling to me well plus they also make it there's like yeah, another section you Bucky's go and brand. get i have to know and i want to talk to somebody at bucky sales do, do people buy kit kats and like chips ahoy at bucky's <laughs> Like, what is the sales on like the, the brand stuff. name stuff versus your stuff i've yeah. never once Bought a name brand anything at Bucky's. I've only gotten Bucky's brand stuff. So I'd love to know the ratio sure. on sales. Um, well, they I never they never talk. I me, mean, but I'd love to know it. My guess would be they're doing they're doing pretty well of converting people over. Because, mm-hmm. like gummies wise, I'm only want Bucky's gummies. I love yeah. gum. They're they actually when we first went, that's the first thing I got yeah. was the gummy bears. They're they're sad. Did you get the sour ones? No, they're just, not sour, they're, but they're very good. I didn't get the sour ones, but mm-hmm. they're just like so fresh. Yeah, and I love Haribo and other ones, but I prefer their gummy bears. Yeah. So they, for me, they literally are turning into like the Costco of <gasps> yeah. of uh, fast they're food. Where like everything they have mm-hmm. is good. Yeah. And then I got, have you seen the plastic container of the mini cookies? The like mini chocolate chips they have. No. Oh, don't get them. Don't get them. Because you will eat the whole thing at one time. They're so good. Tiny little chocolate chip cookies. I, I mean, I, I've always struggled with my weight. So every time I go there, I'm like, I'm just going to get Diet Coke. Yeah. You know, but there'll be days, my my kids will, they'll try, they've tried all kinds of things. The thing that we, I really, really like, and they've been sold out for months is the Bucky Overbite. Which is up by the counter. It's like a, it's almost like a hockey puck, of just chocolate. They have a milk oh. chocolate. They have a dark chocolate. But they're chocolate with peanut butter. Okay. But they're always. Is it sold their out. version of like a big Reese's cup? But it's even bigger. Bigger. It's it's okay. um, it's always up by the register, mm-hmm. and there's a you'll see you'll notice because the basket's empty. Okay. I, I don't That's know weird. what's going they're on. They're sold out. Yeah, I mean, because so- they don't seem to sell out of. They seem to. It just seems like a very well run. I spilled coffee in there two weeks ago. Oh, really? 
I was mortified because they keep it so clean. I spilled coffee and I bent down to clean it up. Four Bucky's employees converged on me to clean it up. I was like, I am so sorry. They're like, it's fine. It's totally sorry. fine. But we have to clean. I'm like, no, I know. I'm so sorry. I ruined your Bucky's. Yeah, I there, felt terrible. There's something with cleanliness there. We went through the car wash for the first mm-hmm. time. And there was dudes. I think it's been open, you know, two days. Yeah. Okay. So how dirty is it going to get? I totally understand you're going to clean after yeah. every shift or something like yeah. that. But they are literally clean all day long. Yeah. Like, I feel like they have a separate grouping of employees that yeah. are the cleaning people. I saw one guy out on the outskirts picking up trash. Really? I'm like, well, I love it. It's so, like they yeah. take such pride in that place. Yeah. What, so, are you, what have you gotten there recently? Um, I... I'm probably not the best one to uh, ask that other than um, because I I'm I'm just, I get like loyal to mm-hmm. things. So I always have a propensity towards gummies. OK. And I want their gummies. Mm-hmm. And they're like, OK, so now I've got gummies and I've got like a Diet Coke. I shouldn't get anything yeah. else. Right. But I'd love the beaver nuggets. They're so good. And um, and I love the overbites. Yeah. And I'm the, going to look for those. If, if they're back in stock. In yeah. fact, we, we went. We, our our tradition as a family is to go on the first day of every month. Oh, I love that! And when we had eight people here this summer, yeah. we did that. Um, but uh, and w- it's at least since probably June that they've been out. But that um, has to. There's something. There's something going there. on. Something going on on but, that one. But other than I that, I don't think there's like a scandal. I no. think there's probably a logical explanation. Now, the other thing I'm working through is the sandwiches. And, I've and never had a sandwich. They're there. they're good, and um, I try. I've I've tried. To, that's actually something I'll rotate. Okay. So like, okay, I'll do the brisket, then mm-hmm. I'll do the pulled pork, and then I'll do they have a chickens, and I, yeah. I'm going through all of that. And then the other day, I actually went up to Nashville and, and uh, flew out of Nashville, so I got a breakfast sandwich. Mm-hmm. It wasn't the best. Okay. But I, I also realized I may have just been sitting there a while, like You're just right. just that time of morning where transitional. Yeah, time. not as many customers, mm-hmm. and it's it sat too long. I'm not yeah. I'm not going to throw them under the bus for that. For sure. Um, I've had their breakfast burritos. I liked those. Those were good. Great size. Yeah. Not too, some of them are too small. Some of them were too big. It was yeah. the perfect amount for a breakfast road trip situation. Did you see the one in Seaverville, Tennessee? They just opened us the largest Bucky's that they've wow. ever they've ever opened. It's so it's near like Pigeon Forge. Okay, and makes sense. Gatlinburg yeah. and all that. That's that's. I love that we have it. Did you? Joe mentioned when I interviewed him the last time that they do five hundred thousand dollars per day. Buckies? An average Buckies. I believe it. Five. Anytime 000. I've been there, it is packed. Yeah. But you know what? I've hardly ever waited in line. That's at true. A, at a register. Yeah. We were there on Labor Day. Mm-hmm. Oh, it was busy. But yeah. But they're always half staff proportional to they do. what their traffic's going to be. Mm-hmm. And you would think doing that much traffic it would be hard to keep up with how clean it is. Yeah. It's just a remarkable business model. Yeah. There. I will say that I didn't like their beef jerky. Really? I've had better beef jerky, but I don't even really eat beef jerky. I don't so. eat it as much anymore because it just gets stuck in my teeth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and like, it's just, old. as you get older, your your teeth kind of break yeah, down. You've got sure. a few crowns. Yeah. And it's like, eh, I'm not going there. But mm-hmm. but other people swear by it. I've yeah. had some people come in to visit and um, that are familiar with Bucky's, but where they live now, there is no Bucky's. Right. So if they come visit... Then they're taking that stuff home, yeah, and they will spend like a good amount of time choosing. Well, I told so and so at the office Mm -hmm. I'd bring them some beef jerky, and yeah, okay. And twenty minutes later, they make their selection. It's like Target for me. Really, I go in for one thing, and like eighty dollars later, I'm like, geez, (laughs) just (laughs) eighty. Golly, Costco is like can can. I do it at Costco too. It can be some serious damage. Yeah. All right. Now, I know you wanted to talk about this. Oh, this did is you the, the see wine, this? The Wine River. Oh, my god. I'm going to just, I'm just going to play this. Play no volume. Video. Look this at that. This is from CBS That's News. That's wine. 2.2 million liters. That's red wine. In mm. Portugal. Yeah. Two of their holding tanks at this winery distillery collapsed, failed, whatever. Are... And 600,000 gallons come rushing through the streets of this town. Are people... I mean, putting out glasses and I mean, I sure would be. 
I think this is I think this is kind of the predominant video I'm seeing yeah. everywhere, but that's just crazy. Luckily nobody was hurt. Only one basement was flooded. How lucky for that guy <laughs> that you can just go down to your basement and bottle it up. Somebody totally lost their job. Um, but the the winery is covering the cost of the cleanup. Because I imagine this is yeah. you know, cleaning up after a flash flood is a nightmare, but then like just I'm sure it stained all the brick or the you concrete almost have or, to release the same amount of water, if not more, to down like the same track with like cleaning. Di- yeah, just to just yeah, to try that's to a good idea. just to try I've to clean even, it out. I didn't even get so far as to how you clean this up. I, I Somebody's got to clean it up. Well, who and if there's ever even been a precedent set, probably like, not. What do you do? Who do you call for their best practice on such a thing? I think you you Google like how do you clean up. So 600,000 gallons, I guess, is 2 million liters. Yeah. Of, OxyClean of, of the town or something. <laughs> I don't know. And I don't know if that's a, if that's a rainy part of the, of the country where rain itself right. and wind will clean it up. Sticky. I imagine it's like it got into a lot of I, like glitter. You're going to be like finding remnants of dried wine for a long time. Yeah, that's crazy. I hope that they lean into this, though. Nobody was hurt. You know, lean in. Market this. Use this. Like, Laugh when, at yourself. I actually hadn't one. heard about it till you sent it to me. And it yeah. was just funny, like, wait a minute, a wine, a river of wine. Like, what is Literally. this? Is this a literal uh, yes. representation or is this a figure? Get thing? me a boat <laughs> and a glass. Like, send me in. So I also wanted to show you. Um, so you mentioned Penn State. How's Penn State doing this year? Penn State's doing pretty well so Are far. Are they? I mean, two weeks in, we're doing well. No complaints. Who'd they beat? So far. Oh, who they um, I didn't do my Penn State research. I didn't either. It wasn't... I couldn't get it here last week. I saw it week one. I can't even remember, but we're playing Illinois next. Are you following the whole Coach Prime in Colorado? <gasps> yes. What do you That's know about amazing. it? That's amazing. Evan keeps breaking it down for me. He's like, this is going to change coaching. This is going to change the face of coaching. I don't think he's... I think it's awesome. Yeah. He said to me, Evan gave me the rundown. He's like, so what happened was Deion Sanders goes to this school and he looks at the team and he says, we're here to play. And if you're not serious about playing, get out. Yeah. And then he went to the transfer portal and he went to his old team. He brought in all these people that are serious and now they're just a great team. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. You know, I used awesome. to think. I used to he think. He could have his own sports show the way he breaks it down. Oh, Evan? Yeah. Well, there's been. Yeah, obviously it's in my feed right now. Mm-hmm. And he, um, I, I've always liked Deion Sanders, but, but the fact that he played for Dallas and, you know, I was a Redskins fan Mm -hmm. and there was always things where I just kind of didn't want to root for him, Right. but he's so talented as a, as a player. And then of course, but when it's in like his hall of fame speech, it came across as like really scripted Mm. and I kind of thought he was a little bit of a phony in a way, Yeah. but I've got to tell you, they he's not a phony and it's on one hand it's you have the cachet you are yeah. and you are a hall of famer mm-hmm. you are a well he can play any sport he wants right. but he was a two sports star mm-hmm. you know starting he's the NFL. a celebrity he has the he has the yeah. credibility right for people to to listen to him mm-hmm. but but he has so he's there as the coach his son's the quarterback. Yeah. His other son's playing defense, and his other son is their social media guy. Yeah. And they are doing a heck of a job with yeah. that. So similar to what Evan was talking about at the beginning, he walks into this team meeting, and he was like, "You guys can leave." He's like, "Cause I have my own luggage, and it's Louis. It's like Louis Vuitton. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. The good stuff has arrived, and, and the old stuff right. needs like, to go. We are only striving for excellence here. And so you know, they beat TCU in the first game. Yeah. And there was a little bit of like chirp. That comes, you know, yeah. from the other side, and that gives a little extra fuel to the fire. And they beat TCU. Mm-hmm. Well, then Nebraska does a few things last week to get under their skin, yeah, to irritate them, antagonize yeah. them, and they beat Nebraska. Right. Well, now the Colorado State coach <laughs> says something, right? So here's the great. So look at these sunglasses, man. Aren't they amazing? The social media guy is doing a great job. Well, what they did today. In response is, let's see if I, it actually might be a video. Let me skip the ad and I'll show you. But the guy basically says, oh, shoot. It's funny. It's like oh. you're kind of trashing him and you can say, oh, well, he brought in old players and his kids. He's doing a great job. So yeah. like, 
Well, he, he's successful right now. So it's today, working. I don't have. I guess I don't know where the video is. Yeah. So the the coach says, uh, "Dion Sanders is disrespectful. You should take your sunglasses off and your hat off when you're doing a press conference." Mm-hmm. My that's the way my mother raised me. Now this coach, as far as all the talking heads, he he's well respected. Yeah. He's also an African American, the mm-hmm. coach of Colorado State, and Dion's like, well, my mother told me to be me. Yeah. Right. And to do me, Mm -hmm. you do you. And so that's what he and so he's he basically gave all of his players today sunglasses, like expensive sunglasses. I love it. And it's on. And I'm like, okay, first of all, you're Colorado State. Yeah. You're not that good. Right. Why? And why? Why poke the beast? So Colorado, Colorado is going to destroy you this weekend. TCU that they were a ranked team. Yeah. They won. No one was calling for a landslide. Nebraska. Okay, they probably should have beat Nebraska. They beat them. They're off to a slow start. They're going to absolutely just annihilate Colorado State. I think, and I always look at it. Don't poke the bear. Right. You're looking at it physically sport matchup. I think this is genius because he knows how to market. Yeah. He knows the attention is going to be on his school, his team. NIL is going to be great for these kids. Yeah. He's going to get TV time. He's bringing in money for this school. That's true. We're all going to order their merch, you know, like. But apparently eight, they have, they have 86 new players. That's 86. It's, so, it's like, so never that been would, heard of. To be two and oh, and they're going to be three and oh, and they do have kind of a tough schedule. Yeah. We'll see. Mm-hmm. I, I, I went on record last year. I said, I think they're going to win it all. And I didn't know all this was going to transpire, yeah. but I just had a feeling. And yeah. I'm, I'm going to be a Buffalo's fan. For sure. I, For I, sure. I need to go to yeah. Dick's after this interview and see if I can find a hat. Right. But or you're going to order something. I'm going to order something. It's so funny how this all works. I am now a Kirk Cousins fan. Are you really? Yes. Because of the show Quarterback on Netflix. And in the same vein, I've never even thought of Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins could walk right by me. I'd never know who he was. Right. I've heard the name, but never paid much attention. I loved him so much on this show. I'm like, hmm, am I a Minnesota Vikings fan now? (laughs) I'm looking up the schedule to see if they're coming to Nashville so I could go see him play. It's just like the marketing of it. Yeah. It works. And unfortunately, you have to play this game. He's got that great. There's a great clip of him when he was with the Redskins. Yeah. How do you like that? You like or, that. Or, yeah, yeah. We say that in our house yeah. now all the time. You like that. Like, it's <laughs> just this, like, it works, and you have to lean into this. Yeah. Regardless of how you do as an athlete. And what do you think Get about the poor New York Jets? Oh, my gosh, Troy. What? I mean, whether you're a Jets fan, an Aaron Rodgers fan or not, this sucks for, like, it hurt me, yeah. you know? I think that's a bummer. I kind of I was telling someone that it's almost karma. Like yeah. golf is one of those things that like we fully believe in the golf gods. Mm. And you don't go out when you're playing golf and like be arrogant. I I've got it today. Yeah. Like when you're a golfer, you learn like you just kind of shut your mouth because somehow we believe in the fact that, mm-hmm. that the golf gods will smack you down. There's some yeah. You don't act like there's a, some humility. An ass. If you act sport. like an ass, you're gonna play bad that day because yeah. it's like it's not tolerated. Mm-hmm. And I, Aaron Rodgers creates a lot of drama. There's been, so a, there's a lot guy. of drama with like him leaving. And look, the business of the NFL, okay, that's a tough cutthroat yeah. business, right? I, I get it. But at the same time, it's like, I think there's a lot of unnecessary drama with this guy. Yeah. Are you staying? Are you going? Are you this mm-hmm. or that? And I, in a way, I look at this as the football guys kind of slapping him down. Like, like look, you're going to get four plays, and yeah. now the Jets are cursed again because... But just the hype, you know? Yeah, after the, all like, the hype. Is he staying in football? Is he staying in Green Bay? Where yeah. is he going? I'd like to play for the Jets. I went to the Cave of Darkness. I'm going to play for the Jets. Hard Knocks is doing yeah. Jets. It's like the hype. And he runs onto the field on September 11th of all days. Yeah. The New York Jets. And four plays later, I like was on my computer doing something. Didn't even realize we had it on. I look up and he's being carted off the field. I'm like, what just, what happened? <laughs> the game just started. And Evan walked in. He's like, what's going on? I'm like, I think Aaron Rodgers was just carted off the field. He's like, what happened? I'm like, I have no idea. I didn't see it. It just, I didn't even know what started yet. Wow. Just crazy. He's had surgery. I think he had surgery. 
ACL mm-hmm. not all, all season. Yeah. Someone had predicted that, because uh, I guess it rained. It was mm-hmm. raining at MetLife Field. Okay. And someone was like, he's going to tear his ACL <gasps> in the first, um, I think they said the first half on that wet field. And some, who predicted that? Just some person on Twitter. That's like when The Simpsons predicts things years ahead of time. But he, I can't, uh, this is not the first time something like this has happened, of course. Mm-hmm. There's been so many of these instances where some high profile trade, yeah. someone comes in and they get hurt and they're out all year. Right. It sucks. It does. Um, I feel bad for the Jets. I feel <laughs> bad for the front office. I'm sure they came in on Tuesday and it was just a rough. Yeah. If they ever went home on Monday, I'm sure it was a rough Tuesday. Did they form. talk about some sort of curse up there? I didn't know. I don't know if there. I didn't I mean, know if there was a curse. I don't think was they've there? won anything since Joe Namath was there in like Super mm. Bowl three. Yeah. So I'm wondering if if we should start talking about a curse like the Red Sox had for so many years of Cubs have for so many years i love us sports fans with the curses and the superstitions <laughs> i just love it i think people who make fun of that like just let us believe in this thing and yeah. like lean into this thing let it be bigger than us well, whether that's a god thing or whether if it's like not as serious not as but it's like this bigger than us i have to be wearing the same socks i have to <laughs> sit here and you have to sit there because last time you sat there that's like baseball yeah. Baseball is probably the most superstitious sport mm-hmm. because they play so many games. They have so many at bats. Yes. You're going to have slumps. Yeah. And you're going to look for anything you can for a good luck charm. For sure. You know. For sure. And I think diehard football fans do that. They too, I yeah. know the Steelers fans do that. Like, I know the Patriots fans are like, you have to watch it in the kitchen. I'm sorry. You <laughs> yeah, don't get yeah. to sit in here with us. You were in the kitchen. I'm actually the type of person that I normally would turn it off Mm -hmm. because if I if I watch, then they'll do bad. Yeah. If I'm really into something. So I usually like just step away for a while. Yeah. And then I'll check the score. And then if it's like decent, then I'll turn it back on. Yeah. I'll turn on a Steeler game, see they're winning. If they start to lose, I'm like, I can't do this to them. And I shut it off. Like, I can't do this to them. I'm I'm, messing them up. I'm the same way. Like we take it so personally. But I love that. Um golf has been interesting this yeah, year. Did it, you watch did you watch quarterbacks on Netflix or Full Swing on Netflix? I haven't yet. I mean I heard You'd a like lot about Full it. Swing. I should watch that. You should. You would like it if you're a golf guy. Golf is just is, is completely broken now. That was such a strange so this season that that first season of Full Swing covered twenty twenty two. That PGA tour as it was, as everyone was speculating, who's mm. gonna go, who's gonna stay, what's the deal? They hadn't yet left. Mm. And then by the end of that season on Netflix, you had seen who had left. And then this happened, and I was like, I'm not even, I know enough about golf, but I, I'm not seasoned, I'm not super informed. I was shocked that day. Yeah, that we- was crazy. That we're just like, never mind, we're just together. I just don't understand how... I I think I kind of understand Liv in a way, Mm -hmm. but as a golfer, it's not golf. No. It's not competitive golf. Yeah. It has no drama. It has no buildup. It has no... Tradition? Well, yeah, and I get... The tradition? Okay, yeah. And part of the tradition are, are the courses. Yeah. It's not just the golfers, right? And this kind of like, this is going to be a crazy reference, but but hear me out. When the Dukes of Hazard was on, yeah, they actually, um, Bo and Luke wanted more money. Okay. And they were like, no. They said, okay, well, we're leaving the show. They're like, okay, well, we'll be fine. We don't need you. We have the General Lee. Well, guess what? The ratings plummeted mm-hmm. when they tried to bring in this other storyline of Coy and Vance. And it turns out it's not just the generally, but you need Bo and Luke as well. You do. And so if the very, th- I think people think that, oh, well, we have these, we have Dustin Johnson, but I don't care to watch Dustin Johnson play a scramble. Mm-hmm. That's all the, I mean, not a scramble, a shotgun at Pumpkin Ridge in Oregon. As nice as Pumpkin Ridge right. might be as a public golf course that I yeah. can play, I don't. It's not a PGH. It's not. Yeah. It doesn't have the storied history. Right. And golf has had no problem with having a storied history. It takes years and years and years for the masters 
for Augusta be, to become Re- iconic yeah, yeah, yeah. or Pebble Beach to become mm-hmm. iconic or Torrey Pines. Yeah. I don't even know where they play and I don't even care. Yeah. And the fact that they all, you know, again, a shotgun start, who cares? Like part of golf is if you're, if it's your first time you're trying to win on the mm-hmm. tour, that kid needs to kid. Let's say they're, a, a, you know, a young person it could even be on the women's tour and they need to go to bed nervous Right. And they need to throw up all night. Yeah. And they need to not sleep. Right. Because that's what pressure does to you. Mm-hmm. And you wake up and guess what? You have a 3 p.m. tea time because you're in the lead group. Yeah. Versus all the guys who aren't there, you know, they're, they're going to go out early because they're, yeah. they're not, they didn't play well. And that's, there's no cut. Everyone gets yeah. money. I'm like, what are we doing here? Yeah. I was telling like whoever, like, just see if you can get on the, how do you, how do you even get on the live tour? Because you're going to make money. It's, mm-hmm. It is a joke. You know, and I get it, but then I look at players who left. Dustin Johnson, he's been in that quite a long time, you know. Brooks. They won their big champions on the PGA. They did all, you know, they did it. Cameron Smith. Right. They're getting to that age. True. Where it's like, can I, I'm, I'm looking at my family. I'm looking at my legacy. I'm looking at my endorsement deals. I'm looking at the fact that my, most of my athletic years are behind me. Yeah. How much longer can I be in this? I understand. I could make a signing bonus, what double what I'm getting at a, a purse for I get it. Sh- On a business sense and sure. then protecting yourself and your family, I'd say go get your bag. Well, here's what doesn't make sense. So you're right. For the most part, I don't care if I like Dustin Johnson, mm-hmm. but he is getting up there. I totally understand. Right. But you know, it hurts when the Cameron Smiths walk away who just won the British Open yeah. and he walks away. Yeah. You know, Bryson uh, and Brooks, mm-hmm. the rest of them, they they're they're you're over forty. You're never right. going to win again, Sergio or Ian yeah. Poulter. Who cares? Good. Go riddance. get your money. The, the, we're not going to be hurt mm-hmm. by by your exit. But here's what what's frustrating, from a business standpoint. In the U.S., we're used to business, right? So the yeah. PGA Tour, the PGA of America, it's a business. So you have a tournament, and the tournament exists because it's profitable, right? And it draws the biggest players in, and there's a there's prize money. Mm-hmm. And there's TV contracts and all this stuff. Well, now you have this tour that's like funded by billionaires. And there is no there is no ratings. Yeah. There's no merchandise. No one cares, yet they're giving them like insane money. So it's like it just doesn't match up from a I don't care to watch, but maybe Mm -hmm. three of them. Yeah. The rest of them, nobody even knows who they are. Mm -hmm. And they're and they're getting paid. So like, what are we doing? This isn't this is this is counter to like how uh, the culture of the golf. culture of like well golf and the business of sport mm-hmm. right and, i agree and yeah. that's i have a little bit of an issue too when it's like you know the equity of pay and men and women's sports like it's all about ticket sales and stuff right like yeah. if you fill an arena then you should get a ton of money because mm-hmm. you filled the arena and you're selling shoes yeah. and all that but like you know unfortunately if it's uh, you know some sport that doesn't have a big following how are you supposed to pay them all this big money when they're not bringing in the money right you know yeah. what i mean so that's the only thing that I'm like, what is w- the Saudis just, it seems like they just don't care. To me, it's almost like they're doing this as a write-off. Yeah. It's like a charitable contribution. They've been doing that with a lot of sporting events, with wrestling and with, or I guess basketball oh, that's right. has been China, right? Like, I just find it like, very, but then at the same time, whatever the politics are of the whole thing, I don't think it's fair to put that on Brooks Kepka. No. I don't think Brooks no. Kepka is, is, you I, know, treating its people terribly. The thing here's you the thing, here's the thing I wonder though, Tori. At some point, their egos are going to catch up to them, mm. right? Like if you're a Cameron Smith, who Australian player, right? He wins. He won another. I think he's won two majors. He wins the the British Open. Presumably, he goes on the talk show circuit. Everybody, he gets all. He could have gotten all these sponsor deals, and he goes yeah. to live golf. I haven't heard from the guy since. No. It, and again, hey, he got paid. He sets up well for him yeah. and his family and his future generations. But at what point do like do the ego set in? Like, man, no one cares about no one me cares anymore. About me. Nobody yeah. wants to interview me anymore. Yeah. Nobody wants to do a reality series on me anymore mm-hmm. because I went to live golf. And really, the PGA players and I would urge any athlete to, who has a platform be the face. Work yeah. this game. Like Bryce- get your endorsements, get your money, get your TV time. Doesn't matter how well you do. Daniel Ricardo from Formula One. Yeah. Not even on a team as a driver right now. He's out with an injury. Really? He was a backup driver. He is still the face of F1. Yeah. 
He does. He's the face because he works it. He's likable. He knows how to do this. He's probably making millions of millions of dollars each year, each week. Just being the face of F1. He's not even driving right now. Well, you know what? You can do this correctly. It's, isn't it interesting that the face of skateboarding is still like Tony Hawk and yes. he's 55 years old. And he, yeah. The face of snowboarding is Sean White, who's now not even retired, doing it, not anymore. even doing it anymore. Yes. And it's I'm I, and I love both of those sports. And I'm like, wh- who's the next person who are going to step gonna up? Be the face. Who's going to be the face? Because yeah. you can't rely on Tony Hawk. Mm mm. I almost, I just wish they all had better business managers to be like, look, I know you just want to snowboard and you just want to work on this sport, but we have to do this other Or marketing stuff. the other athletes. Marketing them, yeah. There's some great snowboarders. They may not all be Americans, mm-hmm. but like what's going on with, with, there's been, there are some skateboarders I can name them. But they're not household names. I don't think I could name another skateboarder. And Michael except Jordan, for Tony Hawk, and Michael Jordan. I just saw a thing. He still makes six million dollars every three days from Nike. Yeah, and that's more than his original contract. Did you watch that movie? Air. Air? Oh yeah, yeah. That was pretty good. That was really good. Anyway, it's just amazing the the business of sports and yeah. And, and, and you bring up a good point. Obviously, if I was in that position, I'd probably take the money. I'd be like, look. I'm not going to beat Tiger. I'm not going to beat that's right. all of these I get that. people. Like, if these people are going to be at this tournament, that's going to be the focus. So if I can go over here, yeah. still play golf, still make millions and millions of dollars, I have to look out for myself It's here. funny because one of the people who's really risen to be try to be the face is like Phil Mickelson. Mm-hmm. Well, guess what, Phil? You're 52 years old. Right. I hate the guy. I, I've actually become... Yeah. I hate Phil Mickelson. Yeah. Um, and then they'll be like, well... Oh, you know, is he deserving to be on the Ryder Cup? Like, he's fifty-two years yeah. old. He he's not he's not competing on the PGA Tour. If he right. even if he was over here, yeah, he went to the Live Tour because yeah, he's a good player. He doesn't necessarily need to be on the Champions Tour. He's no. he's got his body in good shape. He's won everything. He's a good he player to win. But guess what? Yeah, he's not going to win anymore on the PGA Tour. Mm-mm. So he just needs to go away. But he's doing a heck of a job of yeah. becoming this bad boy image yeah. he's got the right marketing people um, on with live golf yeah i think the right marketing helps and i think it's unfortunate that people feel so strongly about you know that organization but yeah. you know I, as it like personally you have to do what's best for you i hear you I'm and just if team- you're still not ready to retire from golfing i guess that's your best option the the, the tell tell test will be like the last time, like, I miss Tiger just because of, like, the, the drama. Yeah. The, the time that we all sat around the TV and watched Tiger make the, his putt on the 72nd hole yeah. at the U.S. Open in 2008 to, to go into a playoff. When that happens with Liv, then, okay, they're here. They've arrived. Yeah. I don't. I, 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 I don't think I saw Rory McIlroy interviewed right after, and he's like still feeling very strongly that Live will not exist within the next well, several years. Well, and the PGA, they've made some mistakes along the way with how they've handled this, and now they are reaching into their pockets yeah. and they're finding money and they're yeah. they're making it so that there may not be guaranteed guaranteed contracts. I don't think there should be in golf, but the, the prize money has gone way up. I will say. For a long time, PGA had the upper hand. It was only them. What's only them? What are you going to do? You're not going to... Okay, don't play on the tour. You don't like what we're doing? What are you going to do? We're in charge here. They are, but... So now there's like another thing that's like, well, we could go over here for better better everything money-wise. So it's like now they are forced to sort of like, okay. And it's only money because the PGA Tour, the European Tour, the Asian Tour, the Latin American Tour, they were all together and had a system for world ranking points and events like mm-hmm. there really to me was nothing broken yeah other than the players wanted more money right and incomes live yeah i uh it's funny the netflix documentaries there's the formula one one there's quarterback and then there's full swing okay golf f1 racing i gotta watch them and football and i mean i've always been a fan of football but to hear to learn about these specific quarterbacks i'm yeah. now a kirk cousins fan there you go i have never been more interested in golf as i am now after watching that show really i have never been more interested in formula one than i have been after watching those documentaries i think whatever whoever is in charge of that is doing a great job of like making sure that like the people like me 
Yeah. Who other than my specific teams, I'm not concerned with what else is going on in sports. I'm now I'm interested in what Brooks Kepka is doing and what Daniel Ricardo is doing and how Kirk Cousins like I'm more interested in these sports yeah. in general. Well, you know what's also I think making a stronger presence here is Premier League. Like soccer. Mm. Soccer's coming. Yeah. As Have some you... of these sports like battle each other out yeah. for you know like i don't as you know like fans it'll tire fans out so in comes soccer yeah did you watch welcome to rexham with ryan Reynolds? yeah i watched some of it yeah again me and evan we're trying to order rexham gear because we've been watching that show yeah we're fascinated by the whole thing like it's the best thing you can do to lean into this marketing of yeah. the whole thing. As much as you might hate it as like the players or whoever, it's the best thing you can do because all of us here in the United States are talking about your little football club <laughs> in the UK. <laughs> right? Like this we're guy, all doing it. One time I was uh, um I was on a business trip in London and me and my, my the guy I was traveling with we get into this cab mm -hmm. and the the driver like something's just happened. Like he's got the glass like window and he's like up there and he's like, he's cheering. He's listening to the radio Yeah. and something's happened. He's all excited. And then, then we're kind of sitting there. And so then he slides the window up. He's like, oh, sorry about that, mate. Uh, where, where are we headed? You know, and I'm like, oh, we're going to a marble arch. Mm -hmm. Okay. And he closes the window and he's like, <laughs> he's like, so he starts driving and then he opens the window again. And he goes, Hey, uh, I could tell you guys are probably not from, you're from America, right? Yeah. Listen, he's like, I just have to tell someone, Tottenham just tied Arsenal four to four, <laughs> and he's like going crazy. So pumped about and it. we're like, uh, so you they tied? <laughs> he's like, yeah. You don't understand. Like we never beat Arsenal. Yeah. So, and to tie them, oh my gosh! Like this is the happiest day. I'm yeah. like, all right, man, whatever you say. <laughs> Good job. Happy for you. He like. I don't remember. It was like 2008, so like I don't know if he even had a cell phone. He probably wasn't. Right. He probably wasn't Early able to drive with one phone. anyway. But he just like yeah. had to share. That's so cool. Like the game had just ended. That's awesome. Well, Tori, what else? You anything else you on your know, mind? I mean, I just feel like we covered a ton today. Yeah, it's fun. We I always often. feel every time we hang out or do this, I feel this way with Erica too from All Things Madison. We just talk so fast we move from one topic to the next but i always leave like we really didn't cover everything yeah like i still don't feel caught up i still don't feel like you know we're good to so we'll you got any questions for me again. no we talked about live we talked about life yeah i'm excited for you in this setup me too proud of you you know it's awesome i got some uh again the marin battle interview will release mm -hmm. next week uh -huh. so that that's cool that and i'm glad i interviewed him now versus like a year ago because mm -hmm. i've learned so much yeah. about some of these nonprofits. yeah and, and just different things where they've been involved with and and literally and i told him i said man you're a you're a great mayor you're a great leader I, yeah huntsville is does things right yeah i've never met him i've seen him at events <laughs> we're always at similar events and I've never thought, like, specifically, is he a good mayor or not? But I look at the state of our town. Yeah. And I'm like, he has to be. For the things we're doing and the growth we have and the way it's being handled, at least from what I see, yeah. I'm sure people would be like, oh, it's not being handled correctly because there's always those people. But just as a very reasonable, level-headed, I can see both sides of anything. Yeah. feels like he's doing a great job. And he's everywhere. Yeah. He pops up everywhere. It feels like he is just willing to be anywhere. Yeah, I, I think, think his that's job, awesome. not Sundays as much, but I think Monday through Saturday, he has to be available for, yeah. he has commitments, mm -hmm. you know, and just to get his time, I actually flew back on a red eye Sunday night into Monday, right? Uh -huh. I get into Nashville at 6 a.m. and I interviewed him at 1.30. Yeah. And I was tired. Well, he's the kind of guy, like, I need to But I wasn't going to reschedule. Available for him. Right, yeah. right, right, right. You know, when you yeah. say, like, when you say, "Hey, I'm totally flexible," you name the time you and they to name be totally it. Flexible. You're like, "Well, well, I'm gonna do I'll it. be there. I'm yeah. not gonna, I'm not gonna ask for a reschedule because mm -hmm. they're gonna say, "Well, it's not gonna be till January." Yeah, you know. I hope I get to meet him soon. You will. I'm. I have seen him around. Um, I need to meet him soon. It would be an honor to yeah. just shake his hand. I've talked on the phone with the um, mayor of Madison before, which is so nice. Oh, Paul Finley? Uh-huh. He was super nice. I'm hoping that once this gets released, mm -hmm. um, and even though I know some people who like are close to yeah. him and work for him, I'm ex expecting they'll be like, hey, can we get Mayor Finley on the show? Yes. Listen, Mayor Finley, 
you come on this podcast. <laughs> Our town podcast needs Mayor Finley. <laughs> your monitor's hard to see yeah. with that light over there now. <laughs> Well, Miss Tori, it's been wonderful yeah, having thanks you. Thanks for having me. All Always the best. We, we didn't even really get to talk about ZYP much. We but didn't. ZYP is, do- is going so well. We're having a good time. We've got a lot of concerts, a lot of events. Um, I'm doing something really exciting in November that I can't wait to talk about. Okay. Um, ZYP wise, um, Thanksgiving situation. Um, pretty pumped about it. So That's cool. we will circle back on that. But lots of things happening at ZYP. And remind people when you're on the air. I'm on Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Okay. So catch me in your midday. 104.3 ZYP. Z-Y-P. And, then she, and then she does her thing. Yeah. And I've seen her do it in person. Yeah. And it's fun. <laughs> Some days I'm like, oh, messing <laughs> it up today. But all right. All good. Hey, have a good one. Say hi Thanks to Evan. You too. I will. And I congratulations. Will. Thank you. And, uh, we'll Next do... time I'll bring Maggie because she'll be a perfect dog. Let's have point. you back uh, like at Christmas. Yeah. Either that or episode 100, which will only be about 15 from now. Okay. But And I don't know exactly what I want to do for that, yeah. but I kind of want to do some cameos. Okay. Uh, Anything you need. All right. I'll always be here. Thanks, Tori. Thank you.